What's up, everybody? It's the Bipolar Prophet, and welcome back to Old Ridge Farm in Farming Simulator 15. Wow. So, uh, as you guys are probably aware by now, I have had all kinds of issues um, with Windows 10 and Farming Simulator and some other games as well. I'm not going to go into it because uh, if you guys follow me on Facebook or on Twitter, you are fully aware of my uh, woes with, farm with uh, Windows 10 and Farming Simulator. Um, you know, basically, I had to basically start all over from scratch. I had to basically rebuild Old Ridge back to the way it was at the end of episode 46. I have done that uh, with a couple of changes. One of them you can see right here. Uh, this is the in-game Case Puma 160. Now, uh, the reason that I'm using this is I use this pretty much exclusively to rebuild the map, um, to replant everything, to, to, you know, to set stuff back to the way it was. Uh, at the end of episode 46, and I really, really like it. Now, there are some very cool case mods out there, but you know what? To be 100% honest, I don't need all the ICs and all the gadgets and all the bells and whistles and everything. This case Puma is awesome. So basically what I did was, to sort of, you know, fit it into the story, I went to the bank, I took out a big loan, and I bought this. Uh, I've used this now for about 11 hours. It's awesome. I really, really like it. Um, as you can see, we're down here at the dairy farm. We're, pretty much everything I own is down here. The uh, the case is down here. The DPW is down here. I've got some hay bales that need to be moved. The Ford is over there with the with the um, bale forks on it. And my JCB is back. Uh, thanks to Sean Blaylock for bringing it back. and bringing it back in one piece, mostly. <laughs> Did a good job getting it on a trailer that it wasn't really designed to go on. Uh, that was a pretty impressive video to watch. Um, obviously, we have our baler and, you know, our, our manure uh, our slurry tank, uh, our manure spreaders on the other side of the manure uh, pit over there. So the very first thing we're going to do is we are going to move some hay bales. Because we're going to need them. Um, so, and it just makes sense to move them. I'm just going to bring my HUD back up here real quick so I can see where I am. Oh, uh, oh I need the whole HUD though. Thank you. Oh, turn that on and we will... Uh, Jeez, I did, really? It's not like I stopped playing the game, you know what I mean? Uh, that's really loud. I need to turn that down a little bit. Po apologize for the flashy screen. Oh, get the right view back. Oh, it's good to be making videos again on Old Ridge as I practically smash into my JCB. Um, you know, it, obviously I've spent a great deal of time on the map, uh, you know, getting it back to the, where it was. But this is the first time I've actually been able to play, you know, play on it the way it's meant to be played. Whoa! Holy freak out camera, what was that all about? Um, yeah, so, you know, this is the first time I, I could actually play on it the way it was kind of meant to be played on, you know, um, and make a video. So I want to thank every single one of you for all the support, all the well wishes, all the great comments you guys have been leaving me. Um, you know, it means so much to me that you guys are, you know, there and you you enjoy what I do. And, you know, you've all been awesome and, and uh, you know, wishing me well and offering me tips and suggestions and everything else. And I'm very glad for all the people who have said to me, you know, hey, you know, I haven't had any trouble with Windows 10 and everything, and, and, and that's great. I certainly don't wish this nonsense on anybody. Um, you know, I've talked to a lot of people who, who did the upgrade to Windows 10, and 99% uh, of them didn't have any issues at all. It almost seemed like I was the only person on the planet who played Farm Sim who had any issues uh, with Windows 10. So, you know, okay, well, if that's the case, then that's the case. Um, and uh, we can now just, you know, go ahead and, and go forward from here. It is fixed, uh, as you can see. So... Uh, basically, what it came down to was I was having trouble um, with the permissions and the user account control with Windows 10. Uh, it wasn't allowing the game to save to itself. So, and I may have mentioned this before. I don't know if I've mentioned this or not. But I spent a couple hours on a TeamSpeak with uh, with Jim from Predatory Gaming, Enzo, and Sadis from OEB Modding. Uh, all awesome guys, as I'm sure you are aware. Um, and you know, Enzo was Enzo was you know absolutely a help you know this is his map obviously he created it um you know so he was he was really walking me through a lot of different things basically uh what ended up happening was we sort of came to the determination that windows 10 had broken something in farm sim um and you know and and by that point i was so frustrated and so concerned that you know i was basically out of business because as you guys know uh farm sim is the bread and butter of my channel it, it's my favorite game uh, it's the game i play the most of it's the game that ha you know that has the most videos of it on the channel and I really didn't know what I was going to do. Um, so, you know, I just started deleting stuff and getting rid of stuff because I, I was getting all kinds of weird errors that I never got before. Uh, call stack and Lua errors and everything else. Um, you know, and that all just came, again, down to permissions because, uh, you know, the, the, the Lua files and the scripts were looking to read stuff 
uh, in the game that it couldn't read because of the permissions, the way they were set. So unfortunately, you know, in my sort of desperation, I just started deleting stuff and, and everything else. And, uh, you know, that was obviously not the correct answer, you know. But ultimately, we got it all back. We got it all fixed. All the rest of the game seemed to be okay. Uh, ETS, which, of course, today is uh, Sunday. You guys will see this on Tuesday. There, were, there was a Project Cars video uh, released today. There was an ETS video that's going to be released tomorrow. So, you know, we're back, uh, back pretty much on schedule, making videos, having some fun, hopefully. So... Back to Old Ridge. So, what's been going on on Old Ridge? Well, to be honest, uh, I don't really know because uh, I've been really, really busy. Uh, I haven't had a lot of time to really sort of do anything, um, you know, with with the story, with the role play, with anything like that. Because I've just been working so hard to try to get it back, uh, you know, to where it was. So, I think I will throw this in here. I don't have silage bales just yet. They haven't uh, fully fermented yet. But I did put some straw in here. And plus, it's, a, you know, one bale. It's... It's it kind of senseless to take up a whole spot for one bale. So I'll throw this in here. When I have silage, we'll make some silage bales. So drop that in there. Very good. Okay. In fact, I will check those bales. I'm pretty sure they are not uh, silage bales yet. I like to fold those forks up, too. I'll go ahead and shut that off. Jump out. And we'll go run over here and check uh, to see if we have silage bales yet. I don't think so, though. Uh, nope, not quite. 89.2%. Okay, so at some point today, they will be silage. So I can make some mixed rations for the animals. Uh, all the animals are back. Uh, the cows, I did increase the number of cows. Uh, we're up to 30 now. The cows do have water. They have straw. They have um, uh, grass and uh, hay, uh, straw right now. So they have a little bit of forage. Not a bunch, but, you know, enough to sort of get them moving. Um, you know, so that they can produce some milk and whatnot. So. Okay. Uh, let's see. I think I'm just going to disconnect this here. Not the best place in the world to leave it, obviously, but for now, it'll be okay. I'll jump in the cab. Now, the fields um, are back to the way they were. Uh, well, you know, crop-wise, anyway. Uh, there's potatoes on the home fields and on field 10. There is barley on field 1. Um, and there is alfalfa planted in field 3, because if you remember, I should probably turn the uh, beacons on. If you remember uh, from episode 46, I said I wanted to plant alfalfa in field uh, three, you know, and let it sit for the winter, quote unquote. Um, and then we'll plow it in come springtime. Sort of as, you know, some free, well, free, you know, in a general respect, uh, natural fertilizer. Now, what I do need to do is get some weed prevention over here on, um, on these potato fields. But unfortunately, uh, because I'm a big idiot, I forgot to check to see what kind of herbicide potatoes like. So, I have no idea. So, we're going to have to maybe save that for the next episode. Uh, but I am going to check to see what these fields need as far as nutrients go. So that we can uh, get some nutrients down. I'm pretty sure the, f the soil moisture is probably kind of low by now. So, uh, putting some sort of, you know, liquid nutrients on there will help a little bit. And they'll need it anyway. So, you can see the weeds uh, growing up in the field over there. And if I had been smart before I started recording this, I would have checked to see... <laughs> what herbicide uh, potatoes like, but I didn't, so okay, we'll do that next time. So we'll just drive down here and stop before we get in the crop. That would be good. Jump out, and we'll run in here and see what the, what we're looking like here. Uh, the soil moisture in this field is not too bad. Uh, N and PK are both fairly low, so I guess we could put N and PK in that field. Or NPK, I should say, in that field. And in this field, the soil moisture is ooh, really low. Um, and the PK is low. So I need N in one field. I need PK in one field and NPK in the other field. So it's going to be a couple of trips back and forth to the, uh, to the fertilizer filler to change the fill type. But okay. Might as well get started on that. We'll start with the NPK, I guess. Um, one thing I've been having a, a, a pretty good think about is uh, whether or not I want to do the the pig uh, forage, the whole system, you know, with the potato washer and the steamer and the and the shredder and all that. Um, obviously, uh, I don't remember who told me this, uh, but apparently selling washed produce in the UK is illegal um, for freshness reasons or, or, or some reason. I'm sure some of my UK friends could, you know, straighten me out about that, whether that's true or or if it is, you know, what the reason is or, or whatever. Uh, but what I was thinking was is that it might be neat to actually be able to do the whole forage system. But what I'd like to do is put the actual fill planes in the game, you know, or in the map. Um, and 
there is a good tutorial on Mod Hoster on how to do it. Unfortunately, it's in German, and when you translate it into English, it's a little confusing. I don't fully understand, if I'm going to be completely honest, you know, um, on how to do it. And I don't want to screw it up, because it will screw up the map. Whoops. We not crash into the fertilizer tank, get fertilizer everywhere? That would be not only expensive, but very messy. So I'm going to keep kind of looking, you know, keep maybe reading it, and, and maybe if I get more comfortable with it. It's kind of like Soil Mod, you know. Um, you know, thanks to Mike Murphy for making an awesome uh, tutorial, you know, that, that we can all follow to install Soil Mod. He made it very simple, you know. Um, it's kind of the same sort of basic thing, you know, uh, as far as adding stuff in the map i3D and then, you know, putting stuff in a folder and, and all that sort of stuff. Uh, but I don't want to screw it up. So, And what will happen now is it, that stuff is all placeable, so it will absolutely work. But I believe what it will do is it will put apples into the into the steamed potato part. Um, so uh, let's see. Which one are we on? We are on this one. We want to fill this up with NPK. So, okay. Uh, and I don't want apples showing up in the bucket and, you know, and, and, and everywhere else. So I'd really like to get the correct fill planes in there. So, um I'm going to keep working on that, you know, and if you guys have any, any suggestions, any tips, any place I could go to maybe, you know, read about it or, or, or learn about it, or, or if you guys know uh, yourselves, you know, please, by all means, leave me the, leave me something in the comments, send me a tweet, you know, hit me up on Facebook or whatever, um, you know, I, I'll take all the help I can get in that, in, you know, with that sort of thing, so. All right, so I'll leave it on NPK, and we will go and do uh, the one home field that needs NPK, then we'll come back and fill it up with uh, with PK and go do the other field. And then we'll go check field one. Uh, I know that the grass fields, gra uh, fields eight and nine, which I just recently grassed, uh, they should be okay. I'd really like to get some manure down on them, obviously, but I just don't have enough yet. The cows haven't been around uh, in, this, in this iteration of the map long enough, really, to do that yet, so... I know I don't have any uh, apples or pears to harvest just yet because those haven't been in the ground long enough. Oh, actually, they may have been. They may have been in the ground long enough now. Uh, I'll have to uh, check and see. So, But this is, you know, sort of maintenance -y stuff. This was stuff that I was going to do um, after the last episode anyway. Um, you know, and then, of course, everything happened and I didn't get a chance to do it. So it's good that I can do it now. You know, we can make a video and, and uh, get back to Old Ridge and, you know, I... I I really, I love this map so much. I couldn't imagine not doing this map anymore, you know. Uh, it just didn't feel right. So, Amagower, and don't get me wrong, Amagower is a great map, and I really enjoyed it. But I didn't enjoy it as much as this. So, it wasn't too much of a struggle for me to say, okay, well, you know, Amagower is over, and we'll move on to something else. Now, speaking of that, I have a sort of a plan for what I want to do for replacing Amagower. As I've said, um, you know, I'm always looking for map suggestions. I'm always looking for you, you guys' you know, suggestions on what you think would be a good map for me to do. Um, and I am going to leave it completely up to you guys. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to... I've got a, quite a few suggestions already from people. Thank you very much, by the way. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to do sort of a s little series of videos on each... Not, you know, multiple videos on each map, but one video on each map, kind of showing it off. Um, and then at the end, maybe that'll take a week or two weeks or whatever. And at the end of that, I will put up a straw poll, and you guys can vote on what map you guys want to see me do next. Uh, soil mod, not soil mod, big, small, whatever. You know, I have quite a few map uh, suggestions now, and a couple of maps that I found that I like uh, that maybe you guys would like too, and you, maybe you'd like to see me, you know, uh, work them. So, so probably a couple weeks we'll have a, you know. We'll, I'll start making videos. You guys will, you guys can watch them. You can, you know, check out the maps and all this. Um, I'm sure probably you'll be familiar with a few of these maps. It wouldn't surprise me at all. Um, and then, you know, at the end of that, we'll put up a straw poll. You guys can vote. And whichever one gets the most votes will be the map that BP fumbles about on next. What I'm kind of looking... I'm, I'm hoping I can get a bunch of that done this week. Um, this week coming, like I said, today is Sunday. You guys will see this on Tuesday. So hopefully, you know, maybe on Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I can do some of that. I'll uh, get back to Old Ridge. Whoops. Did you, did you not want to spray this little bit right here, BP? And the other bit you missed down on the other side? <laughs> um, and then... So like I said, yeah, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Get back to Old Ridge, you know, somewhere in between there. Uh, maybe have a couple of days where I have a couple of videos coming out a day, you know, to kind of catch back up. Uh, from from what I am, you know, sort of humorously calling my summer vacation. Uh, certainly wasn't a vacation, you know. I had a lot of stuff going on. I had a lot of stuff with the house going on. I had a lot of stuff, obviously, with the computer going on. Um, 
my stress levels were very, very high. <laughs> but you know what? Uh, I have a very simple philosophy I live by. Did you wake up breathing this morning, BP? Yep. Then it's a good day. So all the other stuff is all stuff that can be dealt with, you know, with the correct amount of patience. So, ugh. Like me smashing into, uh, you know, every tree on the farm with this boom. This poor boom. You know, if they had actually ever put in sort of, you know, like damage morphing in the game, you know, like you get sometimes in racing sims and whatnot. Um, can you imagine what the ends of these booms would look like? They'd just be all tore up, all bent and twisted and everything else. Probably not even work. So one thing I do know that's been going on, um, only because I, you know, I went down to the pub um, day before yesterday and had a little talk with uh, with Reefy, you know, with Mike. Um, apparently, Charles has been sentenced. Uh, his alcoholic Charles, his trusty farmhand there, uh, has been sentenced for his uh, his assault on uh, whatever the Sprake guy's name is. I can never... I know his name is Sprake. I don't know what his first name is. I, I guess I must have blocked him out of my memory because he was an idiot. So, um, I guess, apparently, Charles got uh, 36 months. He's going to do going to have to do 18 as long as he, you know, he, he does, he, he's on his best behavior in prison and all that. That's too bad, you know. Uh, Charles is a great guy. Um, you, you may not know this, but uh, Charles was, and, and I don't think Mike even knew it, uh, Charles was um, helping out the local uh, horse rescue, uh, the local horse rescue in the area. Uh, you know, rescues horses from people who maybe shouldn't have horses or maybe horses that are older and, you know, uh, or whatever, and the owners, you know, don't want to put them down, so they give them to the horse rescue. And basically what the people over there do is they take uh, underprivileged kids or disabled kids um, and bring them out there and let them ride the horses. The horses are all very calm and very peaceful, you know, and just probably happy to be, you know, not, you know, turned into dog food or or put down, you know what I mean? Um, it's always awful when you have to put down an animal. Yes, I'm a farmer, and yes, I, you know, I sell uh, I sell cattle for slaughter uh, along with pigs, you know, but that's a, that's a humane process for the most part, and um, that's just something that has to be done. Horses, on the other hand, are not generally used for meat, you know, so it's nice that they could be rescued, and it's nice they're doing something for the kids in the area. You know, I, I think that's really good. So, uh, what do we want here? We want PK. Okay, can I do the front one now, too? Nope, not quite yet. But anyway, so Charles was uh, Charles was, was helping them out. And uh, he's actually, he'd actually come to me on a couple of occasions uh, to pick up hay bales from me, you know. Um, you know, he stopped by one day and uh, he was like, you know, is there any chance you can spare, you know, to 510 hay bales? Uh, for the horse rescue, and of course I was more than willing. You guys know that I provide hay uh, to the donkey sanctuary, you know. Um, you know, it, pretty much free of charge. I don't charge them anything for it. So, and I was more than glad to help Charles out with that. So that was kind of my first real, you know, sort of interaction with Charles. He's a great guy, you know, a good hard worker. Yeah, he drinks a lot, but okay, so what? So do I, you know. Um, that doesn't mean anything. So I, I, I'm sorry to hear about what happened. I think the spray you know, moron definitely got what he deserved. Unfortunately, you know, justice and all that. So, uh, you know, and, and hopefully Charles has a, you know, has a decent, I hate to say a decent time because obviously it's not fun being in jail. You know what I mean? Uh, this comes from a guy who's been to jail. And so I, at least in America, you know, so I know how unfun it can be. Uh, hopefully everything works out for him and he can get out in 18 months, you know, and go back to work for Mike and everything will be good. Um, also, you may you may know that uh, Justin Crawford Brown is going to get married after this next harvest um, to a to a pretty cool girl from the pub whose name is Mary. She's a barkeep sort of cook, uh, you know, manager kind of thing down there. Uh, she's a pretty feisty lass, as they say, but she's a very good person and she's going to be good for Justin. And I think, you know, Justin is is moving away from the whole Crawford Brown, you know, just pig headedness and and power hungriness and money hungriness and all that and that's really good for him and I'm, I'm really proud of him and I really wish I would have hired him uh, when I had the chance I feel bad that I kind of folded under the pressure you know because that's re really not the way I am I'm really not uh, I tend to not let people intimidate me I t tend to not let people tell me what to do unfortunately because I am not an English citizen you know I'm not a subject of her majesty as it were uh, you know I have to kind of walk a fine line so I didn't know how much pressure the Crawford Browns could bring on me, you know, and I didn't want to run the risk of either A, losing the farm, B, getting thrown out of the country. You know, I don't know if they have that kind of power or not, but I didn't want to risk it. So, but uh, Justin, you know, I, I have talked to Justin since, um, and he, you know, he understood. He, he knows he's obviously very familiar with his family and what they're capable of and everything. So, um, and he was really good about it. And he's actually invited me to the wedding. So that's awesome. 
that should be fun. I know Sean Blaylock is coming down from uh, Holly Hill, so that should be a good old bash. And and uh, you guys also may be aware that he's taken over old Bob's farm after this harvest. He's on a sort of a, 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 a rent to own plan uh, where he pays Bob so much money a month, you know, and eventually uh, that farm will be Justin. So there'll be a Crawford Brown <clears throat> actually doing some work in the Old Ridge area, which is awesome. That's that's going to be really, really cool. So, And I'm sure I will see him all the time, you know, whether it's a seed dealer, or, you know, down the implement dealer or, you know, in the pub, maybe he'll stop in once in a while. So, so good for him. <coughs> oh, excuse me. My throat just dried up. I have been doing a fair amount of talking the last few days. Uh, I've been recording like crazy, trying to get, you know, caught back up again. So, uh, there we go. All right. Now, let's go over to field one. Let's get off this field first of all. Let's go over to field one and uh, see. Oops. It wasn't fully folded yet, and I turned into the tree. Jeez, BP, how long have you been driving this thing? So. Uh, speaking of that, eighty-six thousand three hundred twenty-seven dollars we have uh, money-wise. I need to send another ten grand to Sean Blaylock um, to pay to pay this month's uh, installment on the combine. So, got to remember to do that. We just wire the money over, you know, um, from the bank. So, from my bank to his bank. Yeah, I really, really like this case. And you know, there's some really awesome case mods out there. You know, all the Timber One Three One mods are just incredible. Uh, but to be honest, I really like this one, and I don't need all the bells and whistles, so this is more than enough tractor for this location. Um, now, let's see. Oh, uh, what does this field need? Well, it needs PK, believe it or not, and it needs herbicide. So, okay, we will spray some PK on this while we have it. Uh, the N is okay for now, so we'll spread some PK in it, and it definitely needs some weed prevention. Now, I know barley likes... Uh, BB. So I could actually come back and spray because you can spray um, a nutrient and a herbicide. So I may actually fill this up with BB and come back and at least get this field, you know, sprayed with some herbicide. So then after this, um, after that's done, we'll probably go down and check on the apples uh, and the pears and see if they need to be uh, harvested. Oh, I need to go pick up some Ross boxes too. Uh, I've decided to go with the Ross box sort of um, system, you know, instead of the the Brantner um, tipper. You know, the Brantner tipner is cool. Uh, tipner. Tipper is cool, and it works good and everything, but I kind of like the Ross boxes. It's it's a little more my way of doing um, uh, orchard stuff, you know? No, more what I'm used to, I guess. So do a little something different with these fields. I'm sure you can see, uh, you know, a little different as far as headlands and stuff goes. Um, you know, is it wasteful maybe on the field? I, you know, maybe. I, I don't know. I, I just think it looks neat, you know, because rarely does stuff ever go right to the edge of a field, you know. Um, there's always a little bit of working room on the edges of the field. So I just thought I'd give it a shot. And this is a good field. So the little bit of, you know, edges that I didn't plant is not really going to affect the yield all that much. I hope. <laughs> Because, you know, as I've said over and over and over again, we don't have I don't have a massive amount of acreage down here. So I don't have uh, I don't have a lot of, you know, yield to waste. After this harvest, um, you know, after the potatoes are out and everything, probably going to plant alfalfa on everything, get a cover crop in the ground, you know, kind of reduce the nitrate loss um, into the atmosphere and into the water and everything. Uh, and, you know, the, the added benefit of having some free fertilizer. So. Hopefully by then I'll have enough manure to spread. I'll spread manure on them. I'll plow everything under. Uh, plant alfalfa, and then that can sit for the winter uh, until spring, and then we'll just plow that all under manure again, you know, uh, and just, you know, continue the cycle um, and probably be on this map for a long time. So I uh, hope you guys are still enjoying this, you know, because I know I am. Uh, regardless of whether I make videos of this this particular map or not, I will stay on this map for a long time because I like it. Um, and even if it becomes my sort of off, you know, another off-screen save game, you know, but I don't. I definitely don't see it coming out of the mod folder. So, I don't know if I want to waste. Not waste. I don't know if waste is the right word. I don't know if I want to use any nutrients on the alfalfa. The alfalfa is kind of. I kind of look at alfalfa sort of as just a controlled weed. You know, it's just grass basically. Um, I, I kind of like to let it sort of do its own thing without having to put any you know any money into it. Because uh, if I'm going to fertilize it and everything, well, then I could just fertilize the field. Uh, 
you know what I mean? So, And I'm not using the alfalfa for anything else other than a cover crop. I'm not going to use it for silage or anything. So, Oh, get turned around here. Try not to drive on the crop. I don't have the... Um, I don't have the the crop destruction on in the drive control anyway, but, you know, try to try to maybe at least pretend we do, you know. I guess I probably could turn it on, you know, and I, I go round and round about that too, whether I want to or not. My only concern about that is, and I could have got this whole field if I, would have, if I was a better driver. We're going to back up. <laughs> uh, this right here is why I don't use... Uh, why I don't use crop destruction because stuff like that would happen. I'd have to drive back through and make another, you know, big old tram line through the middle of the field um, and, and then definitely affect my yield, you know. But I suppose it wouldn't hurt for me to try, you know, maybe be a little more careful, as it were, and give it a shot, I guess. It would be neat to have, you know, tram lines that are maybe a little more uh, true to life, you know, because when you do it with this, um, you know, the, the, the tractor tires always sort of there's a variation in the tram line as opposed to doing it with, say, an implement where the tram line is going to be dead straight every time, you know? So, I don't know. I don't know. You guys can let me know what you think about that, whether you think that's a good idea whether you, or whether you think BP will just completely, you know, destroy his fields or not or whatever. Um, I will say I may not do it on the small fields. Uh, it's because they're not very big, you know? Um, I don't know. I don't know. All something to think about, I guess. Okay, and that's that. Now, let's get off the field. We'll go uh, fill this back up again with some BB, and we'll put that down for the barley. And uh, and I got to remember to check to see what... Um, uh, this way. Don't hit that tree. Don't hit that tree. Whew, that was close. Um, I got to remember to check to see what kind of herbicide potatoes like. gonna have to come up with some kind of solution for the Ford too uh, before you know before I really start getting fined and stuff I haven't got fined yet nobody said anything there are a fair amount of old tractors in this area you know um, I, I believe that the emissions regulations really apply more to um, your supplemental payments you know as you guys may know uh, we get paid uh, here for growing uh, certain things and for doing certain things for for um, you know, maintaining the the heritage of the area and things like that, uh, environmental payments and all that sort of stuff, and that's all based on your acreage and, and, and the way you farm and, and the things that you do. Um, but you know, and, and there are quite a few old tractors in the area. Um, you know, and I think it's a, there's there's some fairly confusing regulations about hours and about acreage and about the way that the way that the tractor is used and everything. I think I can get away with using it down at either the pig and the beef or the dairy. I may leave it at the dairy, bring the JCB down to the pig and beef, I guess. Um, but, because I really don't want to have to buy another front loader tractor, you know, when I already have one. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, well, first of all, we need to refill it. So we need to put it on. There we go. We'll fill this up. We'll switch it over to BB. We'll go over there and spray that field. Then we'll go check our apples, and then I think that will be an episode. Uh, it's, it, like I said, it's awesome to be back here recording on Old Ridge. Um, you know, it, it's it really is fun. Uh, I'm so glad that uh, you know everything worked out, and I got it all work. I got it all fixed, and everything. You know, you're gonna have this kind of this kind of stuff occasionally. Uh, you know, happen. So, am I not close enough to this trigger? Oh, this one's already full. Okay, very good. Uh, let's see. A, a, B, C, A, A, B, B. Yeah. Okay. And we'll switch to the back one. Can I change this one now? Yep. P, K, N, A, B, C, A, A, B, B. I really like using the double acting stuff, um, especially since there's already weeds on the field, you know. Uh, it'll kill the, wheel, the weeds that are on the field and stop any new ones from growing for a few, you know, a few uh, days. So... As I, as I mentioned, I think in episode 46, uh, I'd like to go maybe organic. I think at some point, maybe next year, when I start to uh, buy some more land in the area, I may go, uh, I may do a couple of fields of organic, you know. So I've been in a conversation with a couple of guys about some things, uh, about a couple of business opportunities. Um, you guys may know uh, Sean Blaylock just went into a partnership with a guy who um, basically buys up old breweries, uh, you know, and then turns them 
get some running and get some, you know, back into into working shape and everything. Uh, and I've actually had a conversation with the same guy. There's an old brewery uh, not too far from here, um, you know, that, that sort of went out of business quite a few years ago, you know. Uh, it's going to take a little bit of money to sort of get it back up and running. Um, but that's something that he was looking at, you know, sort of opening a chain of micro brew breweries, I guess, is, is what he's really looking to do, you know. Uh, and it might be a good business opportunity for me in the farm. So I grow a lot of barley, you know, um, barley being, you know, barley malt uh, being the most sort of popular form of beer in this area, uh, from what I understand. So I don't know. I'm not really much of a beer drinker. I, I tend to be a whiskey drinker. So you can ask Sean and uh, Mike about that. The last time we all got together at the pub. And I told Mike he better bring his he better bring his big wallet uh, for the wedding because he is the, he's going to be uh, Justin's best man, which is really really cool. And uh, <laughs> you know if I'm going to be there and Sean's going to be there, yeah, there's going to be some drink flowing, that's for sure. So now the only problem with this is it's kind of tough to see where you haven't sprayed yet because I because I'm double spraying so. So I'm just going to take a guess and uh, hope I'm right. I could use GPS, I suppose. Actually, I don't think I even have GPS in the, in the mod folder. Um, it, I wanted to explain a little bit about the John Deere, um, the 8400. That's a great tractor, but for some reason, uh, it was throwing up all kinds of Lua errors and call stacks and everything. And originally, I thought it was because <clears throat> the scripts uh, couldn't read or write to themselves, you know, uh, because of the Windows 10 permissions. But once I got that worked out, uh, and I put the I put the tractor in the mod folder, um, and then I went back and checked the log. It was still throwing up call stacks and and, um, and Lua errors and everything. And I don't know why. Uh, I never had that issue with that tractor up until the Windows 10 upgrade. And I don't know what's causing it. So to be safe, I decided that that tractor had to go. Um, you know. And if you need some story for that, I will say that you know that tractor did have 16,000 hours on it. Uh, she threw a rod. And, uh, you know, so I had to go out and spend a bunch of money to buy this. I really, really like this tractor. This tractor is awesome. Um, and I, I couldn't be happier with it. So this is going to be the new big power on uh, Old Ridge for a while now, at least until we get up, you know, until we have a lot of fields and, and we get some of the really big fields. So. Die, weeds. <laughs> Can't have these weeds. Can't have these weeds. And the fields are too small to have a whole lot of weed infestation. Mike can get away with it uh, where he's gone, you know, pretty much fully organic because he has a lot of fields. He has a lot of acreage. His farm is really big, you know, and spread out over a pretty big area. Uh, I don't have that yet. So I, I need, you know, I need every pretty much stock of grain I can get. Yes, even you weeds growing in the headlands, you all die. <laughs> I did it again. Jeez. Now, I'm going to make one more pass. I'll come down one more pass, and I'll try to get these weeds off the headland, uh, just so they don't spread back into the field again. Oh, we have to go look at field 10, too. I forgot about field 10. Whoops. So I'm going to have to change the fill type yet again. So Because I forgot. Maybe we'll do the apple. You know what? Hey, we're getting on a 33 minutes. So what I think we're going to do is I think we'll just make this a spraying episode. We'll do uh, field 10 after this, after this is done. And then we will go and... Um, well, we'll do field 10, and we'll call that an episode. Uh, and then in the next episode, we will uh, go get the apples, um, spray whatever herbicide that the uh, potatoes need once I check. So. Uh, no, 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 no. That's not working. I keep smashing into the fence. So I need to go this way. Jeez, oh, really? What am I doing? Stop, stop. Oh, I know why, because it's stuck on the tree, and it's actually pulling the whole tractor into the into the tree. So that was pretty realistic. This poor sprayer. This sprayer has been through more nonsense in its life. <laughs> These booms would be all twisted. I'd be down the implement dealer every other day going, oh, I need new booms. I'm still not going to still not gonna be in the right spot. 
There we go. Let's try that. Like the new channel trailer says, we leave the dumb in so you can get the fun out. That's that's the thing, right? So It's still dumb, but it's still fun. I hope, you know. I want to again, I want to thank every single one of you guys have been awesome. Um, you know, you putting up with a with a long delay in between videos. Uh, you know, all your comments, all your well wishes, all your, you know, shows of support. It means so much to me, guys. It really, really does. You guys are amazing. Thank you so much. Okay. Now, let's jump in a cab. See if we can crash this into a tree. We'll go around here to field 10, see what that needs, and uh, change the fill type yet again. It is nice to be able to drive around the edge of the field without having to worry about, you know, getting stuck in the trees or driving right up against the hedge or whatever. So you can see a little bit of alfalfa left on the corners of these fields. That's what was actually on these fields, um, you know, when the map was, when you first load the map. So must remember to turn the beacons on when I am driving on the road. And, of course, I turn them on when I pull in the yard, but that's okay. We're going to be crossing over back onto the road anyway, so. <clears throat> Tipper. I seem to remember in Farming Simulator 13, in the in the that version of Soil Mod, there was a way to look to see what um, what crops liked what herbicide. I guess there there isn't there isn't that uh, feature in the in the Farming Simulator 15 Soil Mod, which is fine. You know, I'll just look it up in the README. Not a big deal. Uh, I just forgot to do it. You know, <clears throat> which is weird because I knew I wanted to spray. I said that right before I sat down to make this video. I was like, I want to spray. <laughs> so. And I knew that I had weeds because I'd been on it, you know, uh, yesterday, you know, kind of finishing up the last of the, you know, bringing it back to where it was uh, phase of this. So, all right, let's see. What do you guys, what do you potatoes need over here? Let me just hop out here. Ooh, you need everything. You need P and K. Okay. Well, back to get some NPK then. I don't have the light mod installed. Um, that's why the uh, that's why you see the beacons went off. Um, you know, I didn't install ninety percent of the mods that I had. I installed the mods that I needed for this um, it, it, because uh, you know what? And I've said this before: mods in this game, are, they're just I, you know, I don't know. I, I don't know what if the game is just losing popularity to the point that the mod authors are just like, you know what? I don't care. And I don't want to make mods anymore, you know. And I'm not saying there aren't some there aren't some good mods because there are. Unfortunately, a lot of the very good mods are are converts from Farming Simulator 13. Um, it's kind of a shame to see that you know a lot of the big mod teams that made great mods for Farming Simulator 13 haven't uh, you know decided that they wanted to make mods for Farming Simulator 15. So, but again, you know that's just how it is. So I'm still going to play the game. I still like it, you know, even with all the hassle it gives me. I still love it. So. All right, we will switch this back to NPK now. Fill it back up again. Is the is the front tank still full? It is. Okay, just gotta remember to switch it. Spending a fair amount of money today, that's for sure. Whoops, no reverse BP reverse. Nope, not X. <laughs> Definitely don't want the X. I don't want to kill everything on my fields. Okay, those are both on NPK. Let's go spray some of this on field 10. We'll call this an episode. Ah, 40 minutes, you know. I think it's pretty good. <clears throat> Since we haven't been on Old Ridge in, you know, what, 11 days or 12 days or whatever, so. Um, and then probably what I'll do is, while this is sort of rendering and everything, I will go have a look around and see if I can figure out this uh, material and fill plane uh, thing out so I can get those get the right fill planes for the potato uh, the pig forage system 
in the map because I'd really like to do that. It's really neat and it's really interesting and it's 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 another you know sort of addition of cool stuff to do. So. Beacons! Jeez, BP, come on. <clears throat> I was waiting for the Old Ridge Police to come down and, 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 and rate me up for, you know, moving this big equipment down the road without beacons on. <clears throat> now, I'd, I'd have been smart. I'd have come over here when I had NPK in the, in the sprayer and done all of it at the same time, but you know that's not going to happen. Not with BP, though. So. All right. I still like to get this in a blender. I, I know there's mod versions of this out. Um, I'd like to get it in a blender and, and maybe see if I can take off one of these arms um, and shorten this up a little bit. It's okay for you know for a couple of the fields, but for the smaller fields, it's just it's pretty unwieldy. So could definitely use some rain here in Oldridge. Haven't had any in quite a while. Um, the last sort of moisture we had fall from the sky was hail, uh, which is not great. Luckily, none of my stuff was very tall, so. It wasn't, you know, it didn't knock everything down. It wasn't a big issue, but. We could definitely use some liquid rain, you know. That would be nice. It's been off and on hot here, too. Uh, you know, it's been, you get you get a really hot day, and then you get sort of a cool day, um, but no rain. And uh, it hasn't rained in quite a while, so. I don't mean Mike were talking about that. Uh, down the pub uh, the other day, we were like, ah, geez, you know, we haven't had any real significant rainfall in a very long time. Uh, I guess we could chalk that up to global warming, maybe. I don't know. But. You know, luckily, there's no uh, regulations against watering your, your crops, watering, you know, irrigating your crops. Um, obviously, there's no there's no big pivot irrigators out here or anything. You know, it's all done tank-wise like this, so. Now, you know you're going to smack that tree. Is there any sense in putting this expensive fertilizer in the headlands, BP? Come on. Jeez. I'm such a bad farmer, huh? No wonder I never make any money. All right. Now, can we make this turn? And I know, I know I shouldn't be doing this, driving across the dams like this, but... For the sense, sake of the game, I'm going to cheat a little bit and do it. All right. I'd rather double dose this side of the field than spray this stuff in the headlands where nothing is growing. I don't need to fertilize the weeds. <laughs> they do just fine on their own. And that is that. So there you go, guys. Hope you guys enjoyed the return to Old Ridge. Uh, I know I have. Um, I just realized I need a screenshot for this video. So this this would make a pretty good one, I think. What do you guys think? Think this is a good uh, think it's a good screenshot screenshot with the uh, with the sprayer and everything and uh, some weeds in the dis in the background. Why not? Let's go ahead and take that screenshot. There you go. So I hope you guys enjoyed that. I know I did. Um, you know, it's it's like I said, it's great to be back here on Old Ridge, uh, you know, farming and doing the things that need to be done instead of just running around and rebuilding and replanting and everything else. Um, as always, make sure you let me know what you think about you know the the series about the rebuild about this tractor. Uh, whether you think I should you know maybe keep it or go with something else or whether you like it. I know I love it. I think it's great. Definitely my favorite in-game tractor. Um, you know, anything else you guys want to leave a comment about, you guys know you're more than welcome. I read everything. I reply to everything. Um, make sure you give me a follow on Twitter at I, at, uh, I, at Bipolar Profit. If you follow me, I'll be glad to follow you back. Um, and if, you don't, if you're not liking me on the Facebook page, check me out at Bipolar Profit Gaming on Facebook. Um, I put up, I put up uh, every time I post a video, I put it up on there. I post random pictures and random things that I like to talk about. On occasion, you guys are always more than welcome to post on there as well. Um, you know, I'd love to hear from you. 
Uh, also, thank you so much to all the new viewers uh, that we have we have gone up uh, 63 subscribers in the last 26 days. I was looking at my statistics on YouTube. That is amazing. Thank you so much and welcome. And, you know, make sure you stick around and check out the 400 plus videos that are on the channel. Lots of stuff to look at. Lots of stuff to watch. Lots of stuff to laugh at, too. A lot of dumb stuff happens in my videos. Dumb but fun. That's my thing. Uh, I don't mind being dumb just so long as it's fun. And as always, thank you so much, guys, for making me a part of your YouTube day. And this is the Bipolar Prophet saying, see you later.